We always had our eye open for somewhere to do what we wanted to do. To live a life of meaningfulness and purpose. To protect animals and provide them with kindness and care. We believe that every animal is an individual and should be treated with equal respect and compassion. It is a fundamental component of who we are at Best Friends. Our goal has always been to end the killing and save them all. So we had always been on the lookout for a place that we could create a sanctuary for ourselves and for the animals, and a place that people would come and have kind of a, an experience that would take them beyond themselves, something that would really be transformative. And driving up this canyon the first time, it just blew my mind. And the sense of your immediacy with nature, your place in the universe, it all happens right here. You don't need to say a word. All the things that you might want to tell somebody about how important it is to put life into perspective, none of that really. All those words are secondary compared to an experience like this. And so arriving here, that's really what I understood. We came through here the first time in 1982. That's when I stumbled on this place. And it blew my mind. And I think it's been blowing people's minds ever since. Whether abandoned, abused, or homeless, all animals deserve a home. Here at the sanctuary, each one of the animals in our care are shown peace, healing, and love. So Marshall here came in to us with a lot of fear of humans. He had learned early on that humans were not trustworthy at all. His history before he came involved going through a livestock auction that we know of at least twice. Um, and the second home that bought him there at the auction, he was in a very small pen that he kept escaping out of. And he would get out, run amok through the town where he lived and get chased by the police and the sheriff and anybody that happened to be around and ATVs. And after the third time of that, the sheriff stepped in and impounded him. And that's how he ended up working his way into rescue. When he arrived and we first started being able to play with him was when in doubt, he would panic like a madman and panic so bad that it wasn't uncommon for him to really freak out and like rear up and throw himself over backwards. He did that quite a few times um, whenever he just got unconfident or scared. Really being tuned into his body language helped him learn that, hey, this human isn't just cornering me and forcing me to do stuff. She's seeing the subtle signs that I'm putting off and is respecting those. And having him look to me for cues about places to go, things to do, and really be able to have a conversation with him. Come a long way, baby, from that crazy horse running around through the small town, evading the police getting impounded, hot oh, bud. Yeah, he's one of the coolest horses I've ever met. I've learned so much from him, and I'd like to say that, you know, he's taught me as much as I've taught him. Go around. That's my boy. Yeah, that's my boy. Pets are individuals. Each have unique personalities, needs, and desires. Judgment should not be based on their breed, color, or disability. It should only be based on personality. When we welcome a new dog, we assess each individually, creating a unique training program that's tailored to their individual needs. This helps prepare them for their journey to a new home. We built Dogtown here in 1984, starting with a single octagon. And it was a really kind of turning point and a momentous point in our uh, evolution. The idea behind the design of the octagon was to create a structure that was mindful of the dogs at the core of its architecture. It provides a central location for caregivers, allowing them to keep an eye on multiple dogs at the same time while giving the dogs a sense of companionship, knowing that other dogs are around them at all times. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. Come on. When we built Dogtown, 
We wanted it to be different from anything else we'd seen before, a true safe haven for dogs, a place where they could let go of their past and look forward to their future. Dogs here find refuge and healing, and for many of them, it's the first time they find love. Our work extends beyond finding new homes for our friends. We help build their confidence and provide enrichment and special training so they can thrive in their new homes. This way. We're going to go home now. Come on. Let's go home. Pets with special needs are sometimes misunderstood, increasing their chances of being killed in shelters. Since day one, we've been working to change the outlook for special needs animals. Uh, like this guy here, this is uh, Symphony, and Symphony likes to come out in her uh, tent once a day and hang out. Here at Cat World, we treat cats with paralysis, incontinence, and feline leukemia the same as we would any other cat. We understand and accept them for exactly who they are. Come on. There we go. We have always believed that every animal, no matter their special needs, deserves the best chance at finding a loving home. And that's what we are all working to make sure they get. Angel's Rest is such a beautiful place, such a meditative place. Beyond being a final resting place for our animal friends, it allows us to pay tribute to their lives while celebrating the unconditional love and joy that they showed us every day. Listen to those wind chimes, aren't they beautiful? Every one of these wind chimes is placed here as a memorial for a pet who's passed over the Rainbow Bridge. Every time they tuck one in, the wind chime sounds. Even if there's no wind, you hear the wind chime sound. Some folks say that when they've come here, the sound of the wind chimes represents to them the pets who have passed away that are communicating with us through the sound of these beautiful chimes. Every day, we demonstrate that adoption is the only humane choice when finding a new pet. We cannot accept the killing of our best friends as a necessary evil. Since our founding, our mission has extended far beyond best friends. We now partner with more than 2,200 animal welfare groups and shelters across the country with all of us sharing a common goal, to end the killing of animals in shelters and to save each and every one of them. This is building a brighter future for everyone. I think that everyone involved in animal welfare has a moment, a situation that they can think about, something that they refer to that really opened their eyes to something that they can never close again. And I think the thing that guided all of us is this idea that kindness to animals really does make a better world for all of us. What we're really talking about doing is changing people's minds, changing the way people think, the way we all think about animals, about each other, about nature. As long as animals are seen as some secondary thing, we're not really achieving this. As long as people can say, oh, it's only a dog, we're not there yet. It's about understanding that these animals and the lives of these animals have intrinsic value. And it's not up to us to give or take that life. And our work here is to honor that and respect that life. And that's the work that goes out across the country. The moment we realized that it was a movement was when we realized how many other people around the country felt the same way we did 
that killing animals in shelters was the wrong thing to be doing and that it could change. And that can lead us to change the way we feel about each other as well. This is a movement that stretches from coast to coast that makes us better people. And that is a, an idea whose time has come. We will save them all by 2025.